Thank you so much, Nikki, for that thoughtful introduction, and thank you to the band for that incredible performance. I would also like to appreciate my advisor, Mr. Tom, for his wisdom, and Ms. Hardy for her kindness. Lastly, I'd like to thank my parents for supporting me in everything I do, and my older brother, Finn, for being my mentor. It was the middle of the night. I was all alone on an island with no contact with the outside world. I had only a tarp for shelter and a Ziploc filled with a stale English muffin, a handful of granola, and a really sweaty piece of cheese. It occurred to me that maybe I was in over my head. I was attending the island school summer program in Eleuthera in the Bahamas to explore my interest in marine biology. The culminating experience built into the curriculum is a silent 48-hour solo on a remote beach. I expected this part of the journey to be difficult, but what I didn't expect was that I was about to wake up to a new sense of awareness. I was soon to learn that this change in my physical world would have a life-changing impact on my internal world. As I tried to fall asleep under my tarp, I felt vulnerable and exposed. My stomach ached from hunger, and my ears were ringing from the screeching of the cicadas. As I tossed and turned on the cold, wet ground, I felt something in my hair. It was a huge crab. I screamed so loud, I think I disturbed its friends, because soon there were dozens of them, and they had me surrounded. To add to my discomfort, a thunderstorm erupted above me, and buckets of rain flooded my campsite for the rest of the night. When I woke up, I found that my meager supply of food had been stolen by the crabs. I spent some time pitying my situation, but I knew complaining wouldn't get me anywhere. So, I, re I reminded myself of the island school's mantra, be where your feet are. I needed to surrender to this experience in order to be fully present. So, I decided to accept the things I couldn't control and take advantage of what the environment around me had to offer. I pushed myself to get up and explore my surroundings. I found joy in the little things, like being alone with my own thoughts, climbing trees and swimming in the ocean, watching a reef shark drift with the current and creating hermit crab homes in the sand, making music out of random trash and searching for bird's nests in the trees. I spent hours observing how the wildlife interacted with the natural environment, and it was incredible. As my perspective shifted, I even began to find the crabs amusing. There was mystery and meaning hiding everywhere, and I felt an overwhelming sense of inner peace. I was all alone. I could do anything. I felt free. It reminded me of my childhood, when I felt creative and joyful all of the time. Life was simple and carefree. There were no boundaries, no fences. Life was like an open field filled with opportunity. I thought about how as I grew up, somehow that had changed. The freedom of youth became restricted by social expectations. All of a sudden, other people's opinions started to weigh in on my decisions. I went from not having a care in the world to feeling pressure to conform to norms that weren't authentic to me. I went from getting lost in my imagination to getting lost in my phone, from deep conversations in person to sending selfies over Snapchat, from not caring about what I looked like, spending too much time staring at my reflection in the mirror, picking out insecurities I never even knew I had. I went from dancing freely in the tall grass to getting trapped in a social maze. The solo gave me the space and time to see everything through a fresh lens, to restore the essence of youth I had left behind, the innocence and freedom when there was no judgment, no agenda, no fear. As I was exploring the, as I was exploring the woods behind the beach, I admired the trees. I realized that when we look at trees, we appreciate them. We don't say, that tree looks good or that tree looks bad. We appreciate them just the way we are, they are. But the minute we get near humans, we immediately go into a judging mode. If we practice seeing people as trees by just appreciating what they are, including ourselves, we will begin to appreciate ourselves and our humanity. Once we begin to expand our awareness to, to look at the universe as it is in its purest form, we can start to see the beauty in everything. But why had it taken so long to adopt this mindset? We live in a society where so many things are predefined for us, like what is considered normal and what is considered weird, what is considered beautiful and what is considered ugly. 
what defines popular and what defines unpopular, what defines success and what defines failure. Somewhere in there, we have lost the ability to just be ourselves, to breathe life and choose our own path without the burden of social expectations. If our worlds revolve around how other people perceive us, we are depriving ourselves from our true sense of self. Blending in with the crowd devalues our originality, but it is often difficult to recognize how much of ourselves we sacrifice to conform to the majority because we are constantly distracted by our desire to fit in. Being alone can help recenter us. We can learn who we are when the world isn't demanding us to be one way or the other. Some people only know how to stand alone if there's someone else to stand beside them. But taking that opportunity to walk alone, to stand alone, to live alone just for a while can give us insight that can change the course of our lives. We can think of the quiet moments of our life as lonely or as enlightening. If we do things for ourselves and with ourselves, we can connect with the things that make us authentic. We can be who we are when no one is watching all of the time. Back on the island, after a day of discovery, I knew I had everything within me to not only survive this experience, but to thrive from it. I not only felt connected to the natural world, but also to the kid that I used to be. I realized that all I was searching for was myself. I was ready to take my life into my own hands and live to the beat of my own drum as I did as a child. That night, instead of hiding under my tarp, I slept out on the beach under the stars. Sometimes we get so caught up in our own worlds that we forget that there is an entire universe out there. If we put our lives into perspective and understand that we are just a brief moment of consciousness in this grand picture, we can shift our focus to simply cherishing these sacred moments we have on this earth. With this realization, I fell peacefully asleep in the friendly company of the crabs to the symphony of the cicadas. The next day, as I headed back to base camp, I was starving, exhausted, and weak, but I had never felt more alive. After six long weeks, my time at the island school came to a close, and I was on my way back into the hum and buzz of society. The first thing I did after I got my phone back was delete all of my social media. It was the first step I took in following my own path. I realized I relied on it to escape reality, but that's because the reality I was living in was influenced by society. I didn't need it anymore because I was starting to create my own reality as I did as a child. As much as I learned from my time alone at that island, I realized that we don't live on an island. We live in a highly populated society where we are forced to interact with each other constantly. So how do we navigate these waters while staying true to ourselves? When I feel caught up in things that don't align with my values, I like to reconnect with nature. It is always there to remind us of the purity in life. During my time at Millbrook, I've taken advantage of the zoo and spent my free time observing the animals. Sometimes we forget that we share this planet with millions of other species. There is a simplicity in the lives of animals that I find comforting. They just live their lives hand in hand with nature, and they never worry about the superficial things that we do. Animals have taught me what it truly means to be in the moment. In addition, in trying to pass along what I learned from the island school, I created the Anything Authentic Club with my friends. We encourage deep conversations about awareness, nonconformity, and creativity, whether that be music or art or really anything that makes you unique. All in all, I don't blame anyone for conforming. I get it. I've done it. We all do it. It's a survival mechanism. But what makes me sad is how much of a person's true self gets lost in the process. Why are we so afraid of letting the world see who we are? I would love to spend 48 hours on an island with each of you to get to know the real you without any outside influences or distractions. It's not easy to follow your own path when it leads you in a different direction, but it is so worth it. Life is an adventure. It is absolutely filled with opportunity but it's up to us to embrace those opportunities fully and completely, despite what others may think. If we allow society to get the best of us, it can feel impossible to break out of that mold. When we try to stay in our comfort zone, we never truly feel comfortable. There's always that nagging feeling that we could be doing something more with our lives. We are given one life, 
And what we make out of that life is entirely up to us. If we want to reach our full potential, we have to be willing to be judged by others and not let it get to us. In fact, we could change our life overnight if we simply abandon the notion that other people's opinions matter. We are with ourselves for the rest of our lives. We are our own home. If we strive to build a home of love and acceptance, we will never find ourselves relying on materials or other people to bring us joy. Everything we need is already inside us, and it has always been there, waiting to be explored. I wish you all the best as you discover your own path, wherever that may lead. And remember, less human, more being. Thank you.